When we think of graffiti today, we might be most familiar with the kinds of things scrawled on school desks or toilet walls, teenage sweethearts proclaiming their love for one another, or, just as likely, writing lewd or abusive messages. In this respect, much of the graffiti found at Pompeii is very similar. I'm Dr Joanna Paul, lecturer in classical studies at the Open University, and in this audio, we'll be exploring what the graffiti can tell us about the personal relationships of the town's inhabitants. With thousands of people from all sections of society living here, it's not surprising to find traces of every kind of emotion, virtue and vice preserved on Pompeii's walls. In fact, one of the things that Pompeii has been most famous for ever since it was rediscovered in the mid-18th century has been the sheer amount of apparently obscene material found in the city. For example, these frescoes were found above the doorways in the city's brothel. But it's not always the case that graphic imagery necessarily equates to pornography. Images of large phalluses are all over the place in Pompeii, but look at the Latin text surrounding this one, found at a bakery. Hic habitat felicitas. Here lives good fortune or happiness, it says, suggesting that the phallus here is a symbol of prosperity or good luck and in no way intended to be rude or offensive. Elsewhere, though, graffiti writers would think nothing of using all kinds of obscenities in their accounts of sexual exploits. This piece of text was found, unsurprisingly, in a brothel. It reads, Hic ego puellas multas futui, and it's not hard to translate. The author is telling us that in this place, hic, I, ego, did something to puellas multas. These words are in the accusative and mean many girls. Perhaps you can also recognise that the verb, fatui, is a first-person singular, perfect, indicative, active, by its I ending, indicating that this happened in the past. So what did he do? Well, he boasts, here I fucked many girls. Of course, not all the graffiti about love and sex is quite so vulgar. Sometimes it can be quite touching, allowing us to imagine that we can really access the innermost feelings of a long-dead Roman. One man, named Vibius Restitutus, scratched some words on the wall of a building that was probably a small inn. Firstly, he tells us that he, Vibius Restitutus, hic solus dormiwit. Again, the main verb is in the perfect tense, and it's from dormio, so it tells us that he slept here, hic solus, that is, alone, a very different scenario from our previous graffiti writer. Not only that, he goes on to reveal how urbanam suam desiderabat. The main verb is now in the imperfect tense, and it's from desidero, meaning to long for. So, he kept on longing, but for whom or what? The accusative object of the verb reveals all. It is urbanam suam, his own urbana, the wife or girlfriend whom he must have left at home. The fact that another piece of graffiti in the city tells us that restitutas multas decapit saepe puellas, restitutus has often deceived many girls, only adds to the intrigue, though of course we have no way of knowing that they refer to the same person. It's not only men recording their feelings for women on Pompeii's walls. Some of the best-known bits of graffiti in the city imply that the city's gladiators were also objects of lust, as in this bit of text found on one of the main streets. It refers to a man named Kelidus, with the letters TR, an abbreviation for thrix, meaning that he was a Thracian-style gladiator. It tells us that he was the Suspirium Puellarum, the heartthrob of the girls. This has often been taken to mean that the gladiators were worshipped as celebrities, and maybe that's true, but of course, this could also have been written by Kelidus himself, or perhaps a friend of his. Whether you were a gladiator, an ordinary man on the street, or an important politician, graffiti like this was a useful way of advertising your fame and reputation in Pompeii.
If you enjoyed this clip, feel free to follow the links on screen for more interesting articles and free courses from the Open University.